Yahoo Finance Tutorial for Beginners. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the channel. If you are into trading or you are just beginning to find your feet in a trading platform, Yahoo Finance is fantastic. Everything from news, as you can see here on the home page, down to on the right hand side, as you can see here, some markets that are trading on a specific watch list to some of the top markets that you can see at the top of this page they offer it all so if you are looking to get involved in trading this is a fantastic place to start all the way from the beginning of your trading journey all the way through to a more intermediate phase and then also to an advanced phase where you are actually really taking control of how you're trading what you're trading and in as much detail as possible so if you haven't got an account all you need is an email address and you can sign up this is what the home page looks like and this is how we can actually navigate through this home page so right at the top here you have a search bar and you can actually just type in a company's name that you want to actually view so we're going to go ahead and we are going to type in apple now as you can see here there are a few stock markets there is apple inc apple hospitality and there are a few others what we're going to do is we're going to tap on this first one right over here and it's going to show us how this market is actually trading as you can see, this page now offers you a bit of an insight as to how this market is actually trading. So up at the top left-hand side, there is a bunch of information. First of all, it is the company's name. Just underneath that, it is the market that it is trading on. And in this case, it is NASDAQ GS. It could also be the London Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange. And then it also gives you a real-time price. And it also tells you that it is trading in US dollars. Now, right over here, the numbers that you see is $191.94. And this is what the market actually closed at. So right over here, at the bottom of this number, it says July 21st, 4 p.m., EDT. So that is the time that it actually closed at. And this is the amount or the price that it closed at. And as you can see, when it opened, it is less $1.19. And that is 0.62%. And if you travel over to the right hand side of this number, you will see right over here that it also traded after hours. However, trading after hours is a more advanced trading so we're not going to get into that however it did rise at 11 cents and which is 0.06 of a percent so that is just a bit of information as to what the market actually traded at and what actually happened with it when you're going down there's a bunch more information that they actually show you over here so as you're looking down at all of this information it may be very overwhelming however if you understand it a little bit better you will be able to start trading with a bit of know-how and you may be successful or at least more successful with a little bit of knowledge and as you can see here the previous close is the price that the stock finished on previous to this current close over here as you can see there and then the next thing that you want to look at is the open and the open again is what the market opened at and you can see here that there is a difference in the price that it opened and that it closed at and the reason for that again is because of the after hours trading that it happened the bid and the ask over here is a little bit more advanced. So I don't think at this point, if you are starting your journey as a trader, that it would be necessary right now. And then we move on down to the day range. Now, the day range basically is how much this market traded at or in between in one day's time. So it traded between $191.32 and $194.97. And then that goes for the 52 week range as well. So if you're taking 52 weeks from the current date 
backwards it traded between 124 dollars 17 cents and 198 dollars 23 cents now depending on what that range is you can actually see how much the market actually moved up and down and that is actually one of the analytics that you can use when choosing when and how much to actually invest in a market and then we move on to the volume and this number over here is a very large number that is 58,364,002 and that is in a nutshell the amount that was traded up and down so that is what was bid bought and sold in one day of this trade and this is now the previous trade that was just closed the average volume is also the average amount of shares that were bought and sold within the time frame. As we move on now, we can move up to the top of the second row and you can see the market cap. Basically, in a nutshell, the market cap is the value of the company. So the way we can calculate this over here, this number is at three trillion, that T stands for trillion. So the way we can actually calculate that number is the value of the company is calculated by the price of the shares times by the amount of shares available in that market or in that company and you'll get this number over here and again you know this is a this is an average and it is always fluctuating so it's always moving up and down and that number will continuously change the beta five here monthly that is also something that i would rather get into in a later stage when we are doing a more advanced course so that you can just have the basics now and once we are in a full understanding of our basics we can get more into the beta five year monthly the next thing is the pe ratio and the pe of that stands for price to earnings. Now, this basically is the share price with the earnings of the share. So basically it's the relationship between what the share is actually selling for and then the earnings that the share has. So if you want to calculate that or if you want to understand that more, the lower the PE ratio, which is your price to earnings is, the more earnings per price of the share. And that basically makes your share or your company more valuable. So we want this number to be lower rather than higher. And then we go down to EPS. Now this is the earnings per share. Now the earnings per share is calculated with your net income, the net income of the company and the share price. And that is the relationship between the income and the share price. And then, of course, you want this number to be higher. However, this also is a more advanced analytics. So we want to have a look at that maybe at a later stage. Now we're moving down to the earning date. Now, if you are a public company and you are on a stock exchange market, then you are obligated to have your earnings visible to the public eye and this is done per quarter. So the earnings date, this is now August the 3rd, 2023, and this is when they will be publishing the earnings of the company. Now, this information is important to people like you and I that want to invest, as well as other people that are investing larger quantities maybe than what we are in a company. So they want to know what the value of the company is, and they can use this data to see if the company's value is increasing, decreasing, and what rate it is doing so. Then we're moving on to the forward dividend and yield. And basically, that is the company's payouts in dividends. So the last quarter basically is when your payout will have happened. So you can see over here that these statistics, this 0 0.96, and that is actually in dollar, and then the 0.5% over here, you can see basically what this is, is for every share you hold, you will get a payout of this percentage. So if you're having a look maybe at this amount over here, $191.94, you can actually calculate what you will be getting out in the dividend. So you can see here it's 0.5% per share. And you may wonder or think that it is not a large amount of money. However, if you do own 
a large amount of shares, of course, that amount will be larger. And you can imagine if you are an investor, that, that payout can be quite quite good so that is your forward dividend and yield and then the x dividend date basically is the date that you need to have your shares purchased within so that you can have a dividend payout so perhaps over here in this case it says may 12th 2023 so if you had invested before this date so on the 11th and earlier then you will fall into the payout of this date if you have only invested on the 13th perhaps then your payout will be falling on the next x dividend date and then the one year target estimation so basically this is a bunch of information gathered by professional analysts to analyze this particular market and give you a layout or an estimated price as to what the market or what the market price will be for this particular company. And as we move over to the right hand side, you can see now you have a chart and this is an active chart. So as you can see, you can full screen it if you would need to. In a nutshell, what you can see here is a timeline of how this company or this market traded over a period of time. So right at the top here, you can see it says 1D and that stands for one day. As you move on, that's five days, one month, six months, and that is over a year to date. And that is one year, five years, and then max, which will give you an all-time timeline. So basically what you can see is as you hovering your mouse cursor over the chart it is basically showing you on the right hand side what it is trading at the high the low and the average and at the bottom over here you can actually see that it is giving you its time throughout on its trade and as i said you can change that to five days you can change that over to one month six months and you can actually see for example how this has actually increased over six months and this basically will give you the opportunity to analyze what this market is doing and make a decision in terms of whether it is a good market to invest in or not when to invest in this market and how much to invest in this market i hope you enjoyed this small intro to trading of course there is more advanced stuff or a little bit of intermediate stuff if you would like me to do a video on the more intermediate or the more advanced stuff leave a comment down below and i will have a look at actually producing a video to go into more advanced features on yahoo finance if you like this video don't forget to leave us a like and if you like our content don't forget to subscribe to the channel we will see you in the next one Cheers for now.